Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. It's the learned helplessness for me. I don't understand how any grown adult can go about life like this guy does in our first story. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Customer using manager as his own personal shopper. I work at a mid-sized convenience store, and let me be clear, we do not offer personal shoppers. I work at the till and notice my manager running around fetching items for a gentleman with a trolley. In between customers, I quietly joke to my manager, you should get paid to be a personal shopper. And my manager responded, it's not as if I have work to do. Needless to say, I was not looking forward to serving the guy, and I was quietly hoping he would go to the self-service machine. Nope. He started putting the items on the table, one item at a time. He was sorting the items and put some of them far away from me and some of them closer to me. He found out he was missing scones and asked, where's the scones? I politely said to him, they're by the bakery aisle. I thought he'd go get him himself, but he yelled at my manager to grab the scones for him. My manager politely obliged. There was a long queue and I started to scan items as he put them on the table. I'd finished with the closer items and started to scan the items he placed farther from me. However, he was not pleased with this and yelled, stop, scan the frozen items first. Okay, I replied. This caused a lot of delays as I had to wait for him to put the frozen items and had to stop scanning while he fapped around his trolley getting the frozen items. All the time he was complaining about being a slave to the missus and this was his first time shopping. He also said, you wouldn't understand since you're not married. I politely suggested that he use our online click and collect service if he wanted someone to do the shopping for him. I also suggested he use our competitor store delivery service. At that point, I didn't care if we lost him as a customer, but it's a small price to pay if it meant my colleagues didn't have to deal with him. He couldn't hear me over the noise of the store. The mask muffled my voice a little. He asked me to speak up and speak slower. I just nodded and pretended to listen to his moans. It was a noisy store and I could only hear half of his complaints. He paid and said, I'll make sure you've not double charged me. He spent the next three minutes blocking that cash register, checking the long receipt. While he was doing that, I said, while you're checking, let me serve the next customer. I gladly left him to his own devices and went to cash register one to serve the other customers. He was finally happy and said, you did all right before leaving. And our second story. I just got out of jail and it's only $8. My senior year of college had me pretty broke for personal spending cash, but otherwise fine financially. I could afford rent and food, but nothing luxurious unless I saved up my money. About $20 a month to really just do whatever I wanted with that wasn't already budgeted. Maybe I'd buy a cheap game or eat out once. Maybe I'd save it and have 40 the next month. Who knows? Well, it was mid-spring at the time, and me and the guy that I was kind of crushing on wanted to hang out at the square in our town. The square being this box-like, old-fashioned strip of small-town mom-and-pop restaurants, comic book shops, vintage record shops, etc., all in a nice square grid. You could walk everywhere within five minutes, and there was a nice courthouse with lawn in the center of the square to go hang. It was always covered in fairy lights in the trees. Cute place. I still love it. So with my 25-ish bucks that I'd saved from this month and last, we went to the strip, and I bought some really old-fashioned candy from the old-time candy store, and we went to go sit on some of the benches outside as we munched on stuff like Bitto Honeys and Charleston Chews. I spent about 15 of my 25 bucks and was happy with my purchases. I was on a not date date. I was pretty happy. In comes the choosing beggar in all their glory, walking up and down, asking for a moment of our time. I'm generally a pretty nice person, probably even a doormat here and there because I hate confrontation. I generally will be more than happy to give what I can to people if I know they need my help. Even if I have like 10 bucks to my name at that point. But I mean, it's all I had. I was at least a little hesitant. So this lady started talking, saying pretty bluntly, Hey, I hate to bother you guys, but like, I just got out of jail and walked down here to try and find some help. I need money to make it to, insert state, two states away from here. I was wondering if you could spare about $8 for me to buy a bus ticket. And as she talked about the jail bit, she motioned off in the distance to the north. And immediately I was confused. 
A. Bus tickets across my state would cost more than $8, let alone two states away. And B. There's a county courthouse actually nearby, but it was in the exact opposite direction of her pointing. So I smile and nod despite the confusion and get to thinking. It was right near spring break. We were literally less than a mile from campus, and lo and behold, the Transportation and Civil Help Office was actually offering aid to anyone who needed to travel home to their families over the break. It wasn't even necessary to be a student as long as you filled out the required paperwork. There was literal grant money for that. I looked into the option thoroughly at one point as a possible way to get home for Christmas vacation, not allowed to stay in the dorms during that, and I had no car back then, and I knew they were still doing it. Seems like a perfect solution to this problem, if I do say so myself. So I mentioned that to them. Hey, we go to Insert College here, right down the street. They have a transportation service center for things like this if you need to get home to family or relatives. I think they'll still let you in if you fill out all the forms required. They're the ones to handle a lot of the bus systems around this place anyway. At this point, the guy I was with was just looking kind of nervous and awkward because the big dummy had a bleeding heart the size of a country. Bigger than you. Bigger than me, even. Maybe she could smell it. Oh, no, sorry. I really just need the money right now. They took all my things when I got processed. It's only $8. Red flag three. That's not how jails work. They give you back your stuff, as far as I'm aware. Correct me if I'm wrong. But stupid, foolish, too kind boy over to my right was already standing up and ruffling through his wallet. Even the look of, you're being stupid, I shot him, wasn't enough for him to catch on. He went so far as to say he didn't have any cash and offered to go to the candy store we were just in to make some change. He kindly accepted. When he walked out, he was $8 poorer, and I had to grip my teeth a bit at the placating look on his face. After she started walking down the street again and was out of earshot, I did ask him if he knew he just got scammed. His only response was a helpless look and a, just let me think I did a good thing, okay? I didn't have the heart after the puppy dog act to tell him that I could see over his shoulder the lady stopping another pair of people on the street to give them the same story. The best part, if that exists, about people like that is when they obviously don't know their story all that well. And our last story. Karen screams at me for banning her thieving son. This happened a couple of days ago, so I'll do my best to have the conversation exactly as it went but some may be paraphrased. For context, I work nights at a gas station. About a week ago, a couple of kids, probably no more than 15 or 16 years old who are semi-regulars, as in I've seen them a few times before but not often enough to know them, came in around 2 a.m. and pulled a runner on me with around $30 in drinks and snacks. As I'm not allowed to chase shoplifters, I do what's required and leave a note for my boss so she can pull the tapes and post the pictures for us so we can tell them to get out if they're ever stupid enough to come back. You wouldn't believe how many thieves actually are, in fact, stupid enough to come back. These two morons in particular. Well, two days ago, I'm working my only weekly day shift and who should walk in but my pair of thieves? And who do they have with them? One of their mothers. I immediately buckle down and tell them they need to go now. The following is how the conversation went. Karen will be the mother, B1 for boy one, B2 for boy two. Awesome manager, truly the best. Me will be me, duh. The two thieves walk in. Me, uh-uh, you two need to go right now. B1, for what? B2, we didn't even do anything. Me, you know exactly what you did and you're banned from the store. You can leave on your own feet or leave with a police escort. You choose. They leave and go back to the car, waiting for them at the pump. From the window, I can see them talking to the woman in the driver's seat, gesturing and pointing. She gets out of her car and storms into the store. Karen. Why the hell did you tell my son and his friend they can't be here? Me. Ma'am, they ran out with nearly $30 in products. We do not allow thievery and they are banned from the store. You're welcome to come and get what they need, but if they're seen on the property, the police are going to be called. Karen. No, my son is not a thief. How dare you? Get me the manager. Me. Gladly. She doesn't know my manager has less patience for customer crap than I do, since the store isn't very big. She's already heard this exchange from the office. I bring her out, and she says exactly what I did. Karen. That's a bold-faced lie. My son's a good boy. You're targeting him and his friend for no reason. Awesome manager, you're welcome to come back and watch the tape for yourself. 
Karen says she'll do just that. Karen, and once I have proof you're lying, I'll be expecting this little crap to be fired. Awesome manager brings Karen into the office. I accompany them. Being the assistant, it's both part of my job and a joyful experience to watch Karen's face fall when she finds out her good boys are a rotten thief. Awesome manager plays the tape, and Karen's son and his friend, clearly identifiable as their only means of a disguise was their school track hoodies pulled up over their hair. Folks, they had their freaking names on the back. They were wearing the hoodies as they sat in the car waiting. Awesome manager. So you'll be paying for the $30 of merch they stole, or do you want me to call the police? OP, run out there and get a photo of the license plate in case the police want it. The Karen was too stunned to speak at first, but eventually remembered how to Karen and stormed out shrieking that she'd be calling corporate. For what? Who knows, but she's calling anyway. Doubling down to be even worse Karen with corporate will probably ban her and two boys from all their stores. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.